Ladies and gentlemen, our next bout of the evening will come to you from the ring. First fighter for our second bout, Warren Ricketts. Give us just a moment, fight fans. We're switching over to the ring for our next fight, 155-pound kickboxing bout. We got to get all the judges and everybody switched over to the other fighting apparatus. Mostly when I woke up this morning, I wanted to say apparatus. <laughs> <laughs> Our fighter out of the blue corner, Eric Renneker. This will be a kickboxing bout, not a Muay Thai bout, so elbows will not be allowed. You're able to clinch as long as you throw an immediate technique. However, prolonged clinching or uh, any neck wrestling, as they term it, is not allowed in the kickboxing division. And this will be three two-minute rounds. And if you haven't done this before, it's the longest two minutes of your life. <laughs> Checking out our tail of the tape here, the red corner fighter, Warren Ricketts. He's 25 years old, comes in quite tall at 6'1 for a 155 pounder. And lists his style as kickboxing. Give us the rundown on Eric Renneker there. Seth? Eric Renneker. 5'11", 155, 0 and 0, style kickboxing, 24. So both these guys pretty equal in just about everything. Not much of a height advantage or disadvantage for everybody. Pretty even in age. I always say the best cardio is, hey, I'm in my 20s. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this is our second bout of the evening, scheduled as an elimination kickboxing bout, scheduled for three two-minute rounds in the lightweight division. Introducing first, fighting out of the letter neck, heating and cooling, red corner. He is a kickboxer, standing six foot one inches tall. He weighed in at 151.8 pounds. With Team Underground from Colorado Springs, Colorado, Warren Ricketts! <laughs> Fighting out of the blue corner, he is also a kickboxer style fighter, standing five foot, 11 inches tall. He weighed in at 152.6 pounds with Team Renegade out of Greeley, Colorado, Eric Homelander! Referee, Oscar Martinez. Come on, over. Come on over, sir. Gentlemen, you've had your final instructions. Protect yourself at all times. Obey my commands at all times. Touch them up. Back to your corners, please. Ricketts wears the red gloves. Renneker wears the blue gloves. Let's go, baby. Fighter ready. Fighter ready. Fight! Let's go, baby. Let's go. Let's go. Yeah, 
Both guys coming out with a nice high guard. Exchanging deep kicks. Front push kick is termed as the teep and tie. I'm liking the head movement by Renneker when he steps forward to set up his punches. Definitely don't want to have yourself being a stationary target in there. And again, nice high guard by both these guys, keeping their defense well intact. Ricketts, a little bit when he goes to kick, brings his hands down. He's going to have to be wary of that. Opponents, coaches, or his opponent himself might notice that, take advantage. Only about 30 seconds left in the round. Ricketts, good job with the counter a moment ago. Shows he's got good vision there in the ring. Then Renneker looking to close out the round with a flurry. Good way to stack up some points with the judges. Ooh, kick right on the elbow with that. That can be uh, that can be brutal on your foot. We'll have to very painful. Yeah, have to keep an eye on it, see if that hurt his foot. Because that was right on the point of the elbow. Don't want no breaky breaky. Renneker's doing a, a great job of working in on the body and going to the head. Sorry, working in on the body and going into the head. And from Ricketts, what positives are you seeing in round one? Ricketts is uh, countering really well, really well. Yeah, I saw that as well. Seems to have really good ring vision. Managing the distance nicely as Ricketts. So, I will say it looked a little bit like maybe Ricketts was dropping some energy toward the end of the round. So I'm getting a couple deep breaths in, so we'll see how he does in the recovery. It is a three round bout, and here we go round two. Renegar acknowledges the fact that he took that one right on the chin. So Ricketts is throwing a lot of one-punch combos. He needs to follow up with those combos. Yeah, it's rare that the single technique has tremendous effect for you. You're right. You want to follow up with that second, third, fourth, fifth strike. And again, I mean, we've alluded to it a number of times, but nice vision by Ricketts really seems to be seeing the counter strikes. It's tough to score well being a defensive fighter, but Ricketts is doing so. Renneker taking a moment to grab a couple of deep breaths. Something that might definitely bring out a little aggression in your opponent. Renneker had a lot of output in the first round. We might see some fatigue this round. Crowd starting to get into this a bit more. All smiles from Renneker, I love it. Love seeing a guy that's in there just because this is what he enjoys doing. More of that nice head movement by Ranneker. Oh, clash of shins, ouch. Not counted as a knockdown, but definitely the judge's favorite if they see you putting your opponent on the mat by off balancing. 
Round three coming up, and we definitely saw Renneker's energy drop a lot yeah. in that round. He still had what I would consider decent output, but you could tell it was taxing for him. I think Ricketts is going to take advantage of that. He's going to come forward the next round. Checking things out on the replay here. Good exchange. Both guys moving forward well. Ricketts, we talked a lot about his defensive striking, but he had more offensive output compared to round one than he did or in round two than he did in round one. Big overhand right lands for Ricketts. Renneker getting right in there with a counter flurry of his own. He talked about not wanting to throw just a single punch. Well, there's what, uh, what you're talking about and how effective it can be. Problem is that can be really energy draining. Tried to go for a little flash and not quite to his own favor. Renneker possibly feeling he's behind on the scorecards, wanting to make a big statement here in the third round. He's suffering energy wise, but willing to work for it. Ricketts gets his head snapped back a little bit. Thirty-five seconds left. Both corners imploring their fighters to continue to pressure forward. Definitely some of the best action of the fight so far. Referee's been pretty non-existent in this fight. That's nice. Able to let the fighters do their work, and they have been doing so. 10 seconds left. Let's see if anybody's got a final flurry left in them. And it's Renneker that pressures forward. All right, looks like the judges are going to earn their money on this one. Both these guys certainly gave their all on that one, didn't they? They did. Checking it out on the replay here. You mentioned earlier, both these guys would benefit from throwing more than a single punch. Sounds like their cornermen got in their ear about that because both of them were better with their combinations in the third. One of the few times in this fight that the referee had to intervene. As we mentioned in the rules, uh, not Muay Thai, so in kickboxing, they'll break them up a little sooner than they will in classical Muay Thai fights. Went for the spinning back kick. Ended up on the ground because of it. Good show of sportsmanship by the fighters in the ring right now. I'm going to try to punch you unconscious and we can hug afterwards. <laughs> ring announcer Stewie. I'm always jealous. He's the second guy that knows what's going on. As far as the winner, Tally Keeper gets to know the score first, and then Stewie gets the sheet. I'm very interested to know how the judges are going to score this one. All right, Stewie's got him in the center of the ring. Ladies and gentlemen, after a three-round battle, we go to the judges' scorecards. Judge Short scores this about 29-28, Redeker. Judge Mellish scores this bout 29-28, Ricketts. 
Judge Abeda scores this bout 29-28 in favor of your winner by split decision, Eric Homelander Well, there we go, a split decision win for Mr. Renneker goes home with the victory. Saw a lot of great counter striking, but it was the offensive output by Renneker that the judges favored.